Hi there, this is the physical installation and mounting video for the STEM audio ceiling device. In this video, we're gonna go over exactly that. How do you actually mount and install your ceiling array? So the ceiling array can be mounted in two different ways. The first one is in chandelier mode, where the device hangs free of anything else. And the second way is using it on acoustic or drop ceilings in a tile mode. Now, when we go over the actual installation, the process of mounting it in a tile mode is gonna be the same for all different shapes and sizes. We actually support three different sizes. The smallest one, which is the European standard, the medium one, which is the North American standard, and then finally the larger tile, which is typically used in Germany, Switzerland, Australia, and so forth. So regardless of the size that you're using, the video is gonna be the same. If you're more interested in the chandelier mode, that's gonna be in the beginning of the video, and then the tile is gonna be a little bit more towards the end. So without further ado, let's go ahead to the installation and see how we get it done. Okay, so before we start doing any type of installation, let's start by going over the hardware that comes inside of your box. So over here, of course, we have the given. This is the actual ceiling array. This is the 100 microphone uh, device itself. That has nothing to do with the mounting options. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Over here, we have the actual hardware they're gonna use to mount this device. Now, this hardware is what we're gonna need to use either for the chandelier mode or for the ceiling tile mode. We kind of have it split over here. So here at the bottom, this is gonna be what we're gonna be using for ceiling tile. We have our metal cap in our bracket, which you can't really see. It's already assembled inside of it, along with the suspension wire. That's for the chandelier mode. We have uh, the hardware to actually connect this bracket in the metal cap to the structure itself. And then finally, we have the connector cover and the cover cap. These are just these plastic pieces for the end that are gonna go on top of the device itself to make it more aesthetic and visually pleasing. Up in the front, we have some nuts and bolts. Those are gonna be used in conjunction with the actual metal tile and the crossbars, and that is a separate installation for the dropped acoustic ceilings. So you're not gonna need all of this hardware for the installation. You're either gonna use this portion for the ceiling tile or this portion over here for the, for the chandelier mode. Um, the only thing that's missing, and it's important to mention, is the grapple kit. The grapple kit, again, is intended only for the ceiling tile mode, and it helps you secure the ceiling tile to the actual structure uh, per regulation in certain states, and also for just general security and safety. So now that we went over all the hardware, I'm gonna go into more detail when we go it, through it and the actual installation itself. So let's go ahead and start with the actual chandelier mounting installation, and then we'll move over to the dropped acoustic ceiling installation. All right, so we're starting off with our chandelier mounting uh, mode. The first thing you're gonna have to do when mounting like a chandelier is go ahead and disassemble this mechanism right here. What we really want is to get this bracket out. So just unscrew these two screws, get the bracket out, and we're gonna uh, affix this bracket to the actual structure. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have our bracket. We're now gonna go ahead and connect or secure this bracket to the structure. This is a very important part. The part of the hardware or these screws, I'm gonna go ahead and secure my bracket to the structure by putting these screws through these holes right here. All right, so now that we have our bracket secured to the structure itself, it's time to reassemble that into uh, this uh, metal cap. So to make it easier on me, I'm gonna go ahead and take out this wire. And maybe this is a good point to show how this wire mechanism actually works. So this is the suspension wire, and I'm gonna wanna eventually adjust how long I want it depending on what height I want the chandelier to have. So pushing it out, the spring won't allow me to do so. So what I have to do is go ahead and push the spring in, and then it will allow me to pull the cable out. If I wanna pull the cable in, I actually don't need to push the spring. All I need to do is just thread the suspension wire through it, and I can always grab it from this end and pull it. So I can totally adjust what length I want my suspension wire to be. And note that at the other end of the suspension wire is gonna be this uh, screw, which is what's gonna actually connect to our ceiling array. So what we do at this point, again, is we will adjust the length of the wire. Whatever is left over, you can either cut, or if you don't have the right tools to cut it, you can just go ahead and just tuck it inside. 
And now we're going to go ahead and assemble this metal cap back onto the bracket. So just align the two screw holes to the two holes that we have on the bracket itself, just like it came. And we're going to use those same screws that we disassembled originally and put them back in place. Okay, so we basically have this whole part, the cap and everything assembled to the structure. Now, again, I'm looking downwards because I'm trying to do it for the camera, but you would obviously uh, be looking up at this and gravity will be uh, making our suspension cable basically hang down. So at this point, you can again, always readjust the wire. You can push it back in to make it shorter, or if you want to make it longer, um, you're going to have to go ahead and push the spring and pull on that cable until you get it to the length that you want. As far as we're concerned in terms of assembling to the structure, we're done. Now let's talk about the other end of the cable and how we're going to go ahead and connect it to our device. So let's go get our array. So now that we have our array, we can go ahead and talk about how we make all the connections on this side of the array. And remember, the suspension wire is going to be dangling over here and eventually we're going to want to connect it to the center of the back of the array. Before we want to do that, let's go ahead and thread all of our cables. So we have our two aesthetic plastic caps. One is the connector cover and one is the connector cover cap. And we're going to want to thread that through any cables that are going to go into this device. Now, again, this piece, the white piece, is going to be closest to the device. And then after that, we're going to have this little uh, metal looking piece. So we're going to thread that through our Ethernet cable and then the white piece through the Ethernet cable. And once we have that threaded through, I'm going to go ahead and take our actual suspension wire. I'm going to thread that through the same two pieces as well. And now we have the two cables that we want actually connected to our device. So I'll plug in my Ethernet. And then now I can actually screw in. Now, before we are going to go ahead and click this white piece in, please note that it has directionality. If you look at it, you'll see that we have plastic wrapping all around and then we have two parts that are open. These two parts have to match with these steps here in the product. So this tooth is going to go over here. All I have to do is go ahead, align it, and then gently click it in. Once I did that, this piece also clicks in. Please note it has two teeth and it has two holes for the teeth. I'm just going to align those two together and click it into place. And we're basically done. So we have our suspension wire, we have our ethernet cable, and if you see, I can actually pull up the device through the suspension cable and it will hold it up properly. Now, if you go back to the original piece that I screwed onto or connected to the structure itself, you'll notice that we also have a little hole over here in the cap. If we wanted to, we could have ahead of time threaded this cable through it and had this run uh, through that hole. The reason why you would use that is in case it's not just a beam that you're connecting to, but maybe it's some kind of uh, drywall insulation or whatnot, um, you can actually run the cable through it and then through the ceiling uh, to whatever you want to plug the other end of this cable to. So that's it. That's how you suspend the device uh, through our suspension kit. You can then always add on um, certain cable ties or zip ties or maybe even some kind of sleeve to make this look, uh, have different aesthetic features. We are just uh, providing uh, this white cable and this metal suspension cable, which uh, looks pretty minimalistic and clean. But again, feel free to customize it in whichever way you want to. Okay, so that's it. That's all you needed to do to hang it up like a chandelier. Now we're going to move on and see what it looks like when we uh, hang this device in uh, dropped acoustic ceiling tile mode. Let's go ahead and check it out. So now we're going to actually go ahead and go over the installation for a dropped acoustic ceiling, a ceiling tile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what we have going on over here is this is the actual European tile. If you're in North America, you'll see little metal brackets extended onto it, and that's going to make it just slightly larger. European standard is 595 by 595 millimeters. American is just a little bit larger. We're talking about 610 by 610 millimeters or two feet by two feet. And then finally, we have the largest version and that's Germany, Switzerland, Australia, and that's 625 millimeters by 625 millimeters 
uh, whatever you need, the process is the same exact process. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually assemble the array itself onto the ceiling tile. It's important to mention that you do not need any other piece of equipment for this. You don't need to use your own ceiling tile and affix the metal piece onto that. You don't need a wooden backboard or anything of that sort. This piece of metal, square piece of metal that we give you, that will act as your actual ceiling tile and you will just drop that in place. Just to make sure you have uh, the correct space or hole for it in your ceiling for whatever size uh, you're intending to install. So let's go ahead and actually affix the array to the metal ceiling tile that you got with your device. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just literally place our array inside of this center hole. Let me center this for you. I'm gonna place it right in the center. Now, notice that the hole is a little bit larger than the array itself. So the array can actually go through. That's okay because what's holding the hole mechanism up is the tile itself. And what's connecting the tile to your array are these two cross brackets. So again, we're gonna connect these cross brackets to the tile and then the array to the cross brackets. To do that, it will actually be a little bit easier if I take the array outside real quickly. And I'll go ahead and assemble the brackets. Now the first bracket that's gonna go down is gonna be the bracket with the opening in the center. Notice that this bracket does not have that opening. So I'm gonna lay it down. It doesn't matter if I lay it down like this or like that. I just wanna align it with the two screw holes. And notice that they also have screw holes over here. And I'm just gonna kind of gently push it in. And once I do that, I'm gonna use these four screws that are provided and I'm gonna go ahead and screw them in. All right, step two, our second bracket. This one's gonna go the other way. And again, I'm just aligning it with the holes and then putting my screws in. All right, pretty simple. Uh, we basically have our cross uh, brackets installed. They're sturdy, they're strong. Now we can actually connect these guys to the array. So the last bolt screw we have is right over here. That's gonna go in the center, right in this hole that we have and through to our array's center connector. So let's go ahead and match those two. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and align these two and then just screw it in place. Okay, make sure you're using an Allen wrench to make sure it's nice and tight. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pick the whole assembly up through the tile itself. And you'll notice that it's strong enough to hold our ceiling array in place, nice, strong, and sturdy. So all we have to do now is go ahead and place this tile in its spot in our dropped acoustic ceilings. All right, so for the sakes of the video, I'm gonna pretend like we're in our dropped acoustic ceilings looking from above, just so you can see what we're talking about. But the tile, whatever size tile you have, is gonna obviously uh, be hanging from the rails that you have up in your acoustic ceilings. Notice that we have these holes right here in the corners. That's where the grapple kit is gonna go into effect. So we highly recommend that you connect uh, some of these holes uh, through a grapple kit to your actual structure, whatever it is, some strong foundation uh, or, or whatnot. So in case something happens and the tile gets moved, it doesn't fall down and it gets held up in place. But the actual weight bearing of it does not have to be just a grapple kit. It could be the tile itself just holding on to your um, rails in your acoustic ceilings. So that's it. Uh, you're basically done. Don't forget, obviously, before you affix the brackets, make sure you made all your connections and you pull the cables out. But otherwise, we are uh, good to go. And that's it, not too complicated. We went over the two different mounting modes, either the chandelier or the dropped acoustic ceilings. If you have any other questions, we're always here. Feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching.